And welcome back to the Spinner Rack, presented by Comics Remixed, Breaking the Fourth Wall, Episode 50. The Big 5 Oh, we the, made it. The Big 5 Hizzy. We made it. We did. Too bad nobody's listening. Too bad. One of these days, someone <laughs> will go back and they'll be like, hey. Yeah, hey, hey. Yeah. Hey. So, want, <laughs> they'll be like, wow, they're 400 episodes in, why am I just now hearing about these guys? <laughs> <laughs> you know? As always, I'm your host, Big B. Brian A. I'm joined by my co-host. Junior Ruiz. Yeah, you know, it's funny you say that because when I reposted all of our early Spinner Rack issues onto YouTube, yeah, and someone listened to the first one, I think, or maybe one of the first five, and they commented and they are like, oh, I've never heard Brian before, you know, is he is he new? What, what is this? Is it new? And it's like, what are you talking about? I've, I've been here the whole time. <laughs> this week we got a lot to talk about. But first, we're going to talk about the, the flavor of the month. I guess we could call it pops, Funko pop, pop, pops, Funko Pump vinyls. Yep. This is uh, it's the crazy addiction that seems to be spreading to any, everyone. Um, like you were saying earlier, a lot of people are even turning away from buying action figures. Yeah. And just going to these, I feel that myself. You know, it's it's weird. Like I've when they first hit, probably about two three years ago now. Mm-hmm. Um, I seen them. I'm like, man, these things are stupid. I was like, they're cool, but they're stupid. Like, I can't see myself shelling out money for this stuff when I can buy an action figure. Um, and then over time, I was like, well, they're making Ninja Turtle pops. Okay, I'll get those. Oh, okay, you know what? They're making Ghostbuster pops. Okay, I'll get those. And it was, it's become that little thing. And now, now it's like I have a whole spreadsheet of like ones that I want to get. And it's not, you know, it's not just me because our buddy Dave Bloomquist collects them. He's like at a hundred and something now. He's buying like two, three pops on a daily basis, you know, and it's spreading. You know, now Chris Bookout buys them, you know, uh, you're starting to get into them. Uh, there's a guy. I'm getting back into them. Yeah, because you had the Game of Thrones yeah, a while I did back. the Thrones like two years ago and then I just stopped. There's a, there's a guy I traded with. Um, he... I, I was trading with a previous, I think, at the beginning of the year we traded, if not or late last year. And um, he traded me some Marvel stuff for some WWE stuff that he was trying to get that I didn't want anymore. And uh, now it's like he's trying to get rid of almost all of his wrestling stuff because all he wants is these Pop Funkos. And it's just like, dude, these things are becoming such a sick obsession. But let's look at the positives for him. One, the price point. The cheapest I've seen him go is eight ninety five at Barnes & Noble. Okay. The most expensive I've seen them is twelve fifty a piece at Hot Topic, but nine times out of ten, when you walk into a Hot Topic or a Fye, they're always buy one get one half off. So you're gonna spend like seventeen, eighteen bucks on two of them anyway. And that's that's so that's a plus. They're easy to find. Everybody carries them. Walmart, Target, Fye, Hot Topic, um, God, I'm, I'm Toys R Us. You know. But I think the best part about it, besides the price point. And the fact that you can find so many of them, or the, the location, the vast variety, the ver- exactly the vast variety of what's out there. I mean, dude, they've got stuff for movies, shows. I mean, let's run down some of the list real quick: Dragon Ball Z, Marvel, DC, uh, Orphan Black, The Coven, Sixteen Candles, Candles, Breakfast Club, Ghostbusters, uh, Breaking Bad, Ghostbusters, Scarface, Back to the Future, Disney, American uh, Horror Story, yes, Game uh, of Thrones, like yeah. you mentioned. You know, Vikings pops are coming out, which I'm gonna have to get those. NFL, NBA, yeah, and, and now they're getting uh, into sports. It's just tons of wrestling. <laughs> Manny Pacquiao pops. Seriously? Yeah, yeah. There's Manny Pacquiao pops. Wow. There's a Psy pop. Melissa has one. A who? Gangnam Style. Oh no Psy. way! Yeah. Wow. They make pops for everything. Disney's huge, huge amount huge, of Disney pops. Yeah, but I mean, like it's it's. For the price point and the huge variety, the only thing I can think of that would probably rival that right now, but they don't have the rights to do everything, which limits it, are those Disney Infinity things that they make for the video games. They mm-hmm. look like little statues. You know, Nintendo makes some, and then uh, Disney makes some. Those are really cool, and I almost got into those, Nint- but then I just Nintendos decided, are Amiibos. Yeah. Um, those are pretty cool. When they first the Amiibos first came out, I was like, what the heck is this stuff? I didn't bother with it, but you know, they're pretty cool. They still look good. But I've ventured more to the pop side than mm-hmm. to those, you know, just because there's more variety, you know. Like I went, uh, where did I go? I believe it was Toys R Us last week. They were um, three for thirty three dollars for the uh, for pops. No, not the pops. Oh, the, for uh, amiibos. Yeah, the amiibos and the, all, all of that Disney stuff. Disney Infinity. Yeah. But like I said, you can go almost anywhere now, or excuse me, not anywhere, but uh, any hot topic. 
you and any FYE. You almost go to any store and they have pops. So. Right, but Hot Topic and FYE specifically are almost always buy one, get one half off. Yeah, that's, and that's awesome. The bad thing about them is if you don't keep up, well, for one, if you open your toys, there's no articulation in them besides just the head moving. Yeah, no. Um, no. But if you're not like online constantly keeping a list of what's coming out, you'll miss out because some pops only come out specific to certain stores. You know, like, uh, for instance, with the Dragon Ball Z, number nine is Goku. Goku is only available through Hot Topic. Right. But if you buy, um, you know, any other characters at any other store and you look on the back of the box, he's listed on there, but it doesn't Mm -hmm. tell you it's a Hot Topic exclusive, so you'd never know. And that's like Spider-Man 2099 that just came out. Yeah, it's a Walgreens Walgreens exclusive. exclusive. Yeah. Well, at least those say, well, I mean, they say exclusive when they're exclusive, but they wouldn't say it on the back of the box. So you would never know. And then you get a lot of variants that are ver- are, are for cons or a specific website. Like Entertainment Earth has a bunch of different ones. Um, some comic book store in New York has a Thrill Kill Batman that I have to get. There's there's all kinds of stuff. But, no, the price point is totally what draws you in. Uh, as a collector, like I'm a big Batman collector, as you know. I like that they don't mess with the boxes either. Uh, that's, all the boxes are the same size. Yeah, yeah, there's nothing. You know, so you can put just put them all. You can easily figure out how you're going to. So it's them. like I've I want to have like a Batman collection, having every different variation of Batman you could possibly have. Now, if I went to action figure out with this, I would easily be spending twenty five dollars a piece or more. Right. Whereas pops, ten bucks. You yeah. know, eight ninety nine some places. You can't beat that at all. And I'll have like twenty different Batmans by the time I'm done. Yeah, and I'll spend maybe two hundred bucks. Where if I was doing action figures, I'd have got you know maybe eight. So they're they're really cool, man. Yeah, they're addictive. But uh, another thing that I I know I was discussing with Chris Booker, and I think I was discussing with you as well. I think it's going to go the Beanie Baby route after a while. Like the bubble's going to bust, and these pops are going to be worthless. Because there's a there's actually a site you can go on. Um, I, f- I forget the name of the site, but it's the, uh, has the the prices. Yes. Yeah. And uh, some of these pops have sold for thousands of dollars. Like, are you serious? There is uh, an exclusive Silver Batman. It was exclusively made for Hot Topic okay. employees. Only 108. I have seen multiple of the 108 on eBay going for upwards 7 I, I saw one go for $1,200. Wow. But so there's only 108. There's hot only topic, 108 hot topic employees in hot, the United States. No, <laughs> but they, I guess they were only available to the employees. Okay. But there's only 108 silver Batmans. Okay. Hot topic employee exclusive. Wow. Which no, you're you're right though. It's it, will the bubble burst? Will we end up getting screwed? Like I know me personally, right now I'm just going to stick to Batman. But there are other things I like. Like you know you, why? You picked up a Robocop. You know today. why you're only going to stick to Batman? Because you're in the house. If you were to go outside and hit up a hot top, you'd be like, and you had some money, you're like, oh, this looks pretty cool. I think I'll get this. I'll well, get the yeah. Joker to go with Batman. Yeah. Well, then I get, and then you, well, there and lies in the problem. Yeah. Now I'm going to collect pops. So now Melissa wants pops, but Melissa wants different stuff. She wants the Disney stuff. So then I'm looking at stuff, you know, and then they've got that Batmobile, and then I'm like, oh, there's a vehicle line of pops. Yeah, and there's only like ten, and like I now feel like. I want to own all those because some of them are cool. Like you got the Back to the Future ride, you got the Ghostbuster Ecto One, yeah. You've got the Turtles van, you've got the Crystal Ship from Breaking Bad, you've got Scarface, which I really don't care too much about that. I mean, the one I really care the least about is you've got the Chimichanga van with Daredevil. Deadpool. I mean, not Daredevil, Deadpool. Right. I'll buy it anyway just because I'm a completist. But like you said, ten years from now, is, are those going to be worth? Not anything? even ten years. I don't. Five think. years? Are they going to be worth anything? Will yeah. they even be around? Possibly not. But right now, it's fun. I want to know why they didn't finish making the rest of the Power Ranger Pops. They only made white, red, and pink. Maybe there just wasn't the sales behind it, you know? You know, I tend to... I'm going to have to disagree with that because they retired those Pops. And those Pops are going for big money. Yeah, that's what I was going to... Same with the Simpsons. That's what I was going to say with it with it biting us, coming around and biting us in the butt later on down the line. Is like all the Batman villains are all retired. Like Riddler... Two Face, Penguin, yeah, and they go for like a hundred dollars or more on eBay. I would love to have those, but is it going to be a situation to where if I just impatient and wait it out five years from now, I'll be able to get them for like you know ten dollars piece? Right. Who knows? Yeah, I don't know. But I, right now, pop is the thing. Yeah, I I, I don't understand it. Um, it and that's me saying that even though I'm into it, mm-hmm. I just like I said, I think the pos. 
the reasons why it's like the ones plastic I crack. <laughs> you get that first hit and you're hooked. Yeah. You're like a junkie. Well, like I, I was talking the book out, like I said before, I got over here, and I think one of the reasons is I'm a Disney fan, you know, but there's never been like a line that you can collect all kind of Disney stuff, mm-hmm. you know. Kind of like how uh, Hasbro did the Marvel U series like mm-hmm. two years ago, or whatever. How there's just that vast um, variety of figures. So I was close to starting with those Disney Infinity figures, just to have something Disney related, you know, that has that covers a wide spectrum of it. Right. But I looked at the Disney Pops checklist, and I'm like, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna go the pop route. But you know who's actually got a lot of them that are still available at retail price, and you can't find them in stores now. Who? Big Bad Toy Store. Big Bad Toy Store. And I actually probably shouldn't have said that on the show because now people are going to go buy them. Yeah, right. And I'm nah. going to be like, oh, I need that Evil Queen of Cinderella and they're going to be sold I'm out. I'm going to have to go back and edit that out now just so we can reap the rewards of Big Bad. Yeah. Screw everybody. Hey, no one listens anywhere, right? So what have <laughs> we got to worry about? No, Inside it's, joke. It's uh, They're truly addictive, man. They are. Um, and everybody seems to get into them. Um, and like you said, it's, it's one of those things where there's such a, a vast amount of of them in different varieties <clears throat> that you find yourself like like you picked up a RoboCop would you have bought RoboCop and anything else what do you mean like if, would you have bought a RoboCop action figure no I've had opportunities to but no well you know what if I if I were at King County and I seen the old school ones that came with the cat firing uh huh and they were a decent price and they were carded I'd probably pick it up just for nostalgia's sake like you know what it, it, seeing that you have a RoboCop now it, I want a RoboCop too <clears throat> but it makes me wish that Funko would put out an Ed 209, like a deluxe size 6-inch. Right, right, that would right. be awesome. But, uh, I mean, it's it's crazy, man. Everybody I know is into the Funkos. Um, you know, like you said, bloomquist has got over 100. I got a buddy that lives in uh, Tulsa, Brent Atwood. Dude, the guy's got, he's probably got 100 too. And he's got them all open and displayed on a shelf, which he won't tell me where he bought that shelf for some reason. Jerk. But then... The real expensive ones, he doesn't take out of the box. And they even sell, they even have little crystal clear packages that you can box protectors. Okay. So you don't even have to take them out of the boxes. Because I know there's some that I'm not going to take out. Like, I intend on taking all my Funkos out and displaying them. Okay. But if I pay over $30 for a pop, it's going in one of those little plastic sleeves. Hmm. I'm not, I won't take it out of the box. Because okay. it's not like anyone's going to be playing with them or anything, but at that point, you you know what I mean. You paid so much money for it, you don't want to take it out. Right. Now, before we switch uh, subjects here. Switch gears? Yeah. Out of all the pops that you've seen, mm-hmm. okay, which um, which pop would you say, if you got that one pop, would probably be your, your holy grail? Like, man, I, I finally got that pop. That was the really the one I wanted. And then you can build down from there. <sighs> The holy grail of pops for me. That's a hard call. Because honestly, I feel compelled to say the one I already have right now, which I'm just waiting to get here, and that's that Joker Batman. For me, that was like, I had to have that. I That thing was the key of, like, it was the it was the first starting block of me even wanting to collect Batman pops, and I probably, probably wouldn't have been able to get it. Mm-hmm. I probably would have been like, ah, screw it. I know that sounds weird. Yeah. And that and I pre-ordered the Rainbow Batmans from Entertainment Earth. Right. Yeah, I can't do those. Like, why not? Because the pink and purple, you just can't do it because they're no, just No, 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 it just, it doesn't have, um, I mean, I'm not, with, with the pops, I'm not treating them like the way I treat all my other action figure lines where I have to be a completist. It's like, I don't need every variant, oh, I don't need this, I don't need that. It's not about being complete, it's, that's just what I'm doing. Like, I just want different Batmans. Right. Well, no, I'm saying... Like, I mean, I have, yeah. you know, 40-something Batmobiles. I have 20 more I have to go out and get. By the time the Eagle Moss thing is done, I'll have over 80. Right. You know, they're all... It's just my thing. Uh, I'm not going to buy Spider-Man Pops, I'll tell you that right now. Really? No, because I have a bunch of Spider-Man MU figures, and I don't like redundancies in my collections. Hmm. But I, I saw, like, the horror guys. I think I'm going to go after the old school... Like uh, uh, universal horror, like the Mummy, I Frankenstein, want those too. Wolfman. Yes, Creature from Black Lagoon. Those look cool. I think I would like the Alien. I'm really thinking that after I get done with Batman, if I'm going to continue going pops, well, here today, I'll probably finish my Game of Thrones collection and then go into like just the horror characters. Well, the um, 
Predator and Alien. Mm-hmm. I actually saw it today at Hot Topic. And they've got two aliens. They have the regular one, and they got like the one that's translucent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Those, I'm sure you're going to want to hurry up and jump on. But those Universal Monsters, I'm right there with. Like, I don't want the Alien, I don't want the Predator. But the Universal Monsters, I'm with you on those. I want those. I can't find Dracula. I can't. In store, I mean. Dracula, the Wolfman, uh, the Bride of Frankenstein, and the Mummy. I yeah. found the Mutant, I found Frankenstein, and I found the Phantom of the Opera. I haven't seen any of them in store, but I've seen them all on eBay. Yeah, of course. Which is pretty eBay. much like my preferred choice of buying things because I'm lazy. No, uh-huh. It's whatever works. That, and when I want something, I want it now. I don't want to have to... You know, I have went through the pains of the hunt, and now that I'm older, I don't enjoy the hunt as much as, much as I used to. Yeah. Now I just want it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then the hunt has been so disappointing because of scalpers and stuff like that. If you're just like... We're not even going to get into that. Uh, the hunt well, thing. Been, That's a whole other episode. <laughs> we've been into the hunt and the scalper thing before anyway. Yeah. But pops are awesome. Um, man, it's addicting, dude. Everybody loves them. Even people that, you know, even people that aren't like into comic books and stuff collect pops. Yeah. Like, like I said, Melissa, she's not into comic books. She wants pops, though. Hell, she already has a few. Like I said, she's got Psy. She's got the mayor from uh, Nightmare Before Christmas. He's on my list. She's got, uh, oh man, she's got uh, Bats Maru. From, it's a Hello Kitty guy, the little penguin, pissed off penguin. So she wants, like, you know, girl stuff, obviously. Right. Like, she wants Beauty and the Beast. And I was looking at them, and Beauty is like $100, but all the rest of them were like 12 bucks. You mean like, Belle? Yeah, Belle. Why yeah, did I right? say... Because that's the name of the movie. Her oh, name yeah, is whatever. Beauty. It's you... like how everybody calls Sleeping Beauty Sleeping Beauty, but her name is actually Aurora. Is it really? Yeah. Yeah, see, I didn't know that. Yeah. Well, that's like how... <laughs> well, did you know Triple H named his daughter after one of his daughters? Really? Aurora, Aurora Rose. Well, that's like uh, Alicia Fox. You know, I call her Foxy Brown. Yeah. And I say that to people, they're like, who? Yeah. And I'm like, well, you know, Alicia Fox. But well, in my brain, Foxy Brown. Speaking of uh, things and people that people love, mm-hmm. JDF. A lot of JDF fans. Right. Last week we played CM Punk's message, or I wouldn't say message, but his uh, comments. His rant? Yeah, from uh, April C2E to what when he called JDF a stalker and stuff like that. So since then, we at Comics Remixed have decided to start a petition to Dana White to get and sign CM Punk versus JDF to make that fight really happen. Um... You know, I've got over two, almost 200 friends on my Facebook. I don't know how many you have. We've got all our uh, Comics Remix fans, whether they listen or don't, or they, they don't. Um, but as of now, we only have 27 supporters. And it's like, I'll be honest, like, it, it really bothers me that I've got all these friends who can share memes and they can share pointless videos and they can tag me in crap. But all I'm asking you is to take two seconds and hit the share button or just sign it. Like... It's not even, part of it's not even about the fight. I don't want to sound like selfish here. Excuse me. But if you guys are friends of ours, think about this. If this fight happens due to our petition, that would put our name out there. And that would help with our brand. Absolutely. You know, that would get us heavily noticed. So why not try to help me out? Why not try to help you out on That's your friends page? You know what I'm saying? That's why I went on my Facebook and I said, don't do this because you care. Don't do this because you want to see the fight. Do it because you love me and you want to support a friend. It's right. 30 seconds out of your day. Is that too much to ask? I don't really think so. So if you guys are out there um, listening and you haven't signed this petition yet or you, you're just now hearing about it for the first time, you could actually go to change.org slash P slash Dana dash white. Um, give me one second here. Let me finish this. Um Da 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 da. Here I'll fill in the time. Da 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 da. How do you like my singing? Da 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 da. All right, I got it. So go to www.change.org slash p slash dana dash white dash ufc dash ultimate dash fighting dash championship dash jdf dash versus or vs dash cm dash punk dash in dash the dash ufc question mark just underscore created 
equal sign and true T R U E. That is the the whole URL. Um, to find this petition online, I know it's a mouthful, but there's a lot of dashes. I'm sorry. Um, go on that website to find the petition, sign it, share it, spread the word, help us out. It would mean everything, you know. Um, even if the fight doesn't happen, it still shows that you support us, you know, and that's all we can ask for. We're not asking you for money yet. We're not asking you, you know, take minutes and hours out of your day. It, it's Even if you don't sign the thing, just share it. It takes two seconds. You know, just click the share button, and that's it. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, if you can't remember the link or it was too much for you to write down, we it's all over our Facebook. Yes. Yeah, just look us up on Facebook or on Twitter. It's like all multiple over there. times we have pimped this. I've been Facebook. that's all I've been posting. And you know, I don't even I, think I put up a status. I lost anything. a day of my life because of my shitty tablet writing out that <laughs> writing out that I'm sorry, my crappy tablet, you my to, POS. You have to bleep that out, son. Yeah. I'm gonna let this we'll just let this one slide. It's it's a learning uh, curve. This has been pretty good twenty minutes, one slip up and, uh, and it's all right. I deserve a prize for that. Nah. But not, uh nah. <laughs> I put a lot of effort into writing that petition, and I had to write it four times before I actually got it posted up. Yeah. So just on that alone, I, seriously, it takes no more than 20 seconds and to if, go on there, write your name. and. Well, like I said, last week we posted um, CM Punk's re- comments. But, uh, but here's... Jason David Frank wants to know this if you've uh, taken more than one This Jason David Frank's message. video, his response. This will probably end our show this for this week, but it. check it out. This isn't towards the end, so I'm just going to go to TED Talk over it, because I've seen this video, yeah. and it's not, you know, I know we're going to have a little bit, I'll shut up when it comes to that. Well, there, there is a but, mock-up uh, of y'all for WrestleMania 29, it, it has which we know come to a point happened. where, like, you know, Punk has come off as, like, a, a jag, mm-hmm. and he's come off as very, like, egotistical, and, um, you know, it kind of makes me realize that... Like, maybe all the crap they talked about him in WWE and everything you've heard was yeah. was justified, because maybe he is just a jerk. Now, what I did was pause this. Uh, what JDF did in his video, it's about a six and a half minute video. What he did was, um, he posted all the time CM Punk verbally said something about him. He even went as far as posting a photo that he took with Punk at a, a previous convention. So, that's all. that all plays before JDF actually gives his response. Mm-hmm. So, I'm going to... Just search for that instead. Um, instead of playing all the stuff that CM Punk said, yeah, he's about three well, no, he's, minutes in. Before you know, they've met at conventions. He's taken pictures with JDF. He's posed at conventions holding the power morpher, and then he's you know been questioned by TMZ. Oh, you know, JDF the Green Power Ranger's been calling you out, and he's not the TMZ didn't say who he was. Right. They just said Jason David Frank's been calling you out. And he was like, just act so aloof about it. Oh, who is that guy? Oh, isn't he like a Power Ranger or something? Oh, you know, whatever. So he like brushes it off. But you've met the guy. Mm-hmm. You've done conventions with him. Obviously, he has approached you and talked to you about this stuff. I mean, wasn't JDF... Like I, I wrote in the piece for the petition, he was trying to even get a wrestling match in, just for shits and giggles. <laughs> I'm sorry. My bad. But then, you know what With I'm With this saying. 50th episode, He's, we're trying to curve the swearing. It's not easy. I'm like a sailor here. It, it happens. We're trying. Well, he's trying. I'm trying. If you think you should get a prize, I haven't said one word yet. That's true. You know, you get the, you get the bigger prize, I get the second prize. You don't get a prize. There is no second place. <laughs> hey, that's not what they teach kids in schools nowadays. Yeah, right. Everyone gets a prize, Junior. Yeah. That, Everyone that, gets a prize. Yeah, what does that do for your self-esteem? You know, it, it makes me feel pretty good about myself because I haven't dropped any F bombs or said, you know, it's like here, you're a, Tuesday or anything. here, a kid, you didn't win, but here's something for trying. No, when I was a kid, I'm pretty sure it was the no, same for I, you. I agree. You got nothing unless you actually put in that work and you won. But anyway, you know, like with the, the C2E2 rant where he pretty much tells him he should shut the F up and that he's a has been, a, a never was, and that, you know, just talking about him is giving him six more months of relevance. Yeah. It's like, man, just make the fight happen, dude. Like, and something sometimes I feel like maybe he's just doing this because maybe they're planning on making the fight happen. Because in my opinion, dude, this is what builds great fights is the massive amounts of, of ooh, excuse me, smack talk. You know? Now here's my question for you. Say this fight does happen. Who do you think, like, let's, do you think more fans like us would outpay a regular UFC fan? 
because CM Punk already going into this has already got negativity surrounding him as far as the hardcore UFC fans go. You know what I mean? So it's like, oh, this guy from the wrestling company comes over here and they're going to give him a match with the Power Ranger? You know, like, yeah. would the hardcores throw their money down for that? We know the nerds. Well, the hardcores, well, see, that's the thing, is they can't just, there's no way that UFC, and I knew this right in the petition, there's no way UFC can just build a UFC event just around this fight. Oh, I agree. But they can build a good card and throw this in there. Yeah. And that's how, I, like I said, in the petition, that's how they'll hook new fans. Yeah, I agree. Because you're going to get these people that want to see this fight, and then you throw them a bunch of other really good fights at them, and they're going to be like, man, this is pretty awesome. Yeah. I might check this out next month, you know? Yeah. That's how you do it. But are you, are you ready to take I'm ready. Up? So let's do it. We're going to close the show with this. JDF's response to CM Punk, which we played last week, I believe, on the lockup. Was it lockup? I believe it was on the lockup. We played it on something, but it was played last week. It was one of our shows last week. JDF's response. Today, Junior. Today. Hey, push play, dude. Right? Yeah, there we go. Yo, Sam, this is a response to your video at C2E2, all right? First of all, I've done several shows with you, man. You're the one that started this. You're the one that went into the panel making fun of Power Rangers and agreeing and saying, yeah, I guess I fight him. What color ranger is he again? Ha, ha, ha. I've done two shows with you. We talked. You lied about your jiu-jitsu, first of all. Second of all, and then you go to TMZ and you laugh it off like you don't know who I am, okay? You go, and this is what bothers me. You go in there and you laugh it off like, no, I don't, never heard of a Power Ranger. No, 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 why the Green Ranger? Then you say Green Ranger. If you don't know who I am, dude, say you don't know who I am. And as first, and, and another thing, C2E2, you go to C2E2, you talk crap again in your panel, all right? You tell me, you tell everyone, first of all, you tell me to F off. And then you give some stupid scenario about Green Arrow, whatever you're trying to get the point across, telling me I don't tag you, telling me I'm a stalker. This is the fight world, dude. You've entered the UFC. You've entered one of the most dangerous sports of all times, the top UFC brand. I don't care. You just put yourself on the line, and you're telling, oh, everyone wants to call me out. Dude, I've been calling you out before you were thinking about MMA. I've been calling you out for a year and a half, and you have not responded. You went to Chicago Wizard World incognito, disguised, because I was there. Why don't you come tell me? Why don't you tell me to F off in my face, dude? You tell me, I don't, oh, forget about it. I liked you. You're a good dude, but after watching your panel at C2E2, I'm, it pisses me off, dude. And I don't care about saying, well, he'll have another six months of social media. The bottom line is, dude, I reached out 30 million fans in one week. This is not about social media. This is not about me wanting your CM Punk money. Dude, I give out so much stuff free at Comic-Cons. Either if they want to buy stuff, they can. If not, they don't have to. You? Have you? If you have, let's do the challenge. How many people's got free stuff from JDF? I take care of my fans. I love my fans. I spend four to five hours of social media. I don't need press on you. What I want is you to fight. And Dana White, I'll fight for free. It's not about the CM Punk money. Dude, I got more experience than you. I don't care what the haters say. I don't care if this video goes viral. I don't care if one person sees it. The only person I want to see this video is you, CM Punk. That's it. So... I'm not sorry for what I've done. Yes, everybody wants a piece of you, and so do I. The difference is, I'll fight you for free, because I don't need money. You wish you had the JDF life. That's the bottom line. I don't care if you have the CM Punk life and I have the JDF life. Let's shake hands after we fight. That's it. Bottom line. So my message is to you, CM Punk, eye to eye. Call me. I tagged you. Respond on your video because I'll see you at the next Comic-Con. If I have to take a flight and see you myself, it's not called stalking. It's called the fight world. Can you say Mayweather, Pacquiao, all the stuff that's been going on? You're going to call them stalkers? No, you're not. The bottom line is it's going to be one of the biggest fight in history. That's it. So this is what you do. Welcome to UFC. I got more experience than you, buddy. There's no reason why you should say no. So that's it. That's the message. CM Punk, I still want to fight. You're an all right dude, but until we see eye to eye, I'm going to keep challenging you until you talk to me. Yeah, it's morphin' time, buddy. It's morphin' time. I like the fact that even after all the berating CM Punk has done of him, he can still at the end be like, you're an all right dude. 
Yeah. Let's talk. Let's make this happen. It shows that, man, JD is a class. classy dude. He's got class. And you know what? I can <clears throat> vouch for him giving stuff away for free for, F- for fans at conventions because the year we met him in 2013, I was one of those fans. Like, he didn't know who we were. You know, like, hey, can we get an interview? Absolutely. Yeah, right? He did a good interview with you guys, and you couldn't even get two minutes with Punk at C2. At C2 uh, I'll get into that. But with JDF, he's like, yeah, totally. He's like, can we just do it towards the end of the show when my line is pretty down? Totally understandable. Yes, let's do it. So he gives us the interview, us no names, because we're fans. After, and he even, what, what JDF does when he goes to these cons is he takes his own little video camera and he'll film his fans. And he puts them together like in a sizzle reel and he'll throw them online. That day we asked for the interview, he had the camera with him. At, it was just him and his um, uh, his buddy, who shall remain nameless, because um, I don't want to put him out there. Uh, not, not in a negative way, just, you know, out of respect. Right. Um, so they were sitting there with the camera, and they're like, yeah, you know, C2E2, come to a close. We're about to do an interview with these guys. And he turns the camera, and he puts it on us. He didn't have to do that. And he left it at the end of his sizzle reel. So if you watch his sizzle reel that he posted and millions of fans have watched... At the end of his video, he says he's going to do an interview, interview with us, puts us on there, and it also included clips of the interview, which was really, really cool. And then the next day, I go back, and he gives, you know, he was giving us photos for free. And I, I get that night, I went home, um, and I went to Walgreens and had that photo printed out from my phone. I took the memory card out, had it printed out as an 8x10, went back the next day, signed it absolutely free. That's awesome, man. You know? See, cool guy. But CM Punk wouldn't even talk to you. Now, I, I don't think I mentioned it in the last episode. Because I didn't want to, like, pick sides. You know, because I... But so, in, in closing, because my back teeth are floating. <laughs> um, okay, well, what happened at C2E2? You know, I, I wanted to talk to Punk. We're hometown guys. You know, of course, why not get a hometown guy right. in a hometown Chicago show? made Punk. Comics remix. Chicago's yeah. Nerd Station. So, why not, right? So, I go up to his table, and there's a couple guys there. And I was like, hey, is he doing any interviews? And they're like... And they laugh in my face. And like, nah, I don't think so. And I was like, well, can I ask him myself? Because he had no line. And they're like, you go ahead. So I walk over to Punk. I introduce myself. He looks me up and down. He looks at my shirt. I give him a spiel, you know, and I even tell him, I says, look, man, you know, you can you can even read the questions I'm going to ask you. Screen them so you know I'm not trying to, like, put, throw you under the bus or anything like that. And in a very nice and professional way, basically telling me no because I don't know who you are kind of deal, he says, I'm very – he's like uh, – I asked him if he's doing any interviews. He says – well, I'm doing one for C2E2 today, if that's what you mean. I says, no, I mean, like, you know, independently, are you doing any interviews with anybody? He's like, um, he's shaking his head like he's not sure. Then he looks at the logo again on the shirt, which was, like, super big. And he's like, you know, I'll be honest, I'm very picky with who I talk to. And uh, so he's like, so I don't see us talking. And I'm like, well, all right. Well, thanks for being honest and thanks for your time. Shook his hand and walked away. And, you know, like I said, very professional about it. Wasn't a snob about it. But in a professional way, telling me, I'm not giving you an interview because you're nobody. That's how I took it. Now, whether that's right or not. And now, for everybody who's listening, to all three of you, um, <laughs> that are like, oh, you, you know, you're you a CM Punk hater. Let me make this very clear for those especially who know me very personally. Dude, you're the biggest fan. I was a huge CM Punk mark. Like, you converted me. Like, huge. And don't get me wrong. I'm still a fan of CM Punk the wrestler. Just not the man. Not the man. Not anymore. Like, I just feel like... Like how we talked on the lockup last week. I'm still a fan of Stone Cold Steve Austin, the wrestler. Yeah. Just not so much the guy. Right. So that's what it's come down to. I mean, like, you know, I got the the Chicago Stars tattooed on my knuckles, partly because of him, but also partly because I'm from Chicago and, you know, I love my city. But, you know, to say that CM Punk had absolutely nothing to do with me making this decision, I'd be lying. You know, it played some influence into it. But it's like, dude, you know, like... You can't even hook up the hometown, right. you know. Like I, I get it, you know. You don't, you're not. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Like you don't have to give us anything, you know. You're not, you don't owe it to me to yeah, give me an interview. See, that's the problem. I feel like that when you get that kind of celebrity, no, you don't owe it, but you should show that the respect that you appreciate it. Yeah. And to me, that looks like he doesn't appreciate it. It's one like you became who you were off the backs of the fans. Exactly. If you can't give five minutes to those people, then you don't deserve where you're at. It's like uh, and no wonder why everyone wants to see you get your butt whooped in UFC. It's like I whether think, it's JDF or not. Yeah, he's going to get pounded. And why I do I feel it. that it's going to be some no name <clears throat> schmuck that's only had like one fight or something that they're going to hype up to be this big deal? 
you know. Because that's what they did with Kimbo Slice. But, oh yeah. wait, no, that wasn't even UFC. They they that was that eh, Strike Force, you know, wasn't it? That was Strike Force. You know, they didn't even have Brock didn't even really fight no names. Yeah. I mean he fought Frank Mir and he whooped dude, he whooped on Frank Mir and Frank Mir got lucky and got him in a in a that leg whole, lock yeah. and, and it was amazing. But it's like you, you get what I'm saying though? No, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. It's like last I believe. And we it need was to wrap or I'm gonna have to change my shorts. WWE put up a, a commercial <laughs> And they had Daniel Bryan narrating it, and he came out to the arena, and he walks in the ring, and he starts doing the yes chant, and he looks around, and there's not one person in the arena. It's like, well, basically, without the fans, there's no yeah, show. Yeah, absolutely, dude. So it's like, so, and this is not just to punk. I mean, with no fans, there is in no general, show. In general. There any, is no JDS. Any celebrity. Yeah, any if celebrity. If you don't respect the fans, you don't deserve the, the limelight, I guess. You know? And like I said, I wasn't trying to hide anything from the guy. No, you know, I, I had the questions right there. He could have looked at him and screened yeah. him himself. He was just a jerk, man. What it is what it do? is. Like I said, he doesn't owe it to us to do an interview. I totally so, get so that. So in closing, but... go to our Facebook page. <laughs> find this find this petition. I put a lot of hard work into it. Junior's idea, my blood, sweat, and words. You know, take And me calling seconds. you every five seconds. Yeah, Are you done? Are yeah. you done? Are you done? Right. This, this isn't going to take two days now, is it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This isn't going to be one of those things where I'm going to ask you, and you're going to be like, yeah, dude, I'll be in 10 minutes, and then two days later you haven't done anything. No, it's up. It's there. It'll take you 30 seconds. We would appreciate it. As always, Big B, Brian Adams, Junior Ruiz, ComicsRemix.com. It's work in progress, but it's still there. The UP, YouTube page, Comics Remix, Facebook, Comics Remix. Email us at Junior at Comics Remix, Brian at Comics Remix, or our Not boy com. Alex at ComicsRemix.com. Until then, we'll see you next week. Go, Pete. I'm, I'm going. Peace.